on today's episode of Moto Cheese. The following movie is rated I. What's up, mini truck? Everybody's calling me Vin Cheese. I might as well go with it. Looks pretty good to me. A little tan, a little bit on a rich side. Happy with that. W16DTR-S. Oil's nice and full. Full and clean. Hasn't burned a drop. So my Kevlar belt came in. 3L, 3.8 x 36. It is a worn belt, as you can see. So it's not a real good test, but the top is a hair thinner because it's worn. The inner groove is a tad thinner, the same as the top. Now the only thing that's left is the actual thickness this way. The automotive belt is a little bit thicker. And don't forget it's worn, but it didn't touch that part. So the automotive belt taper is about the same. This you can put a rear idler behind it. It's way stronger because it's Kevlar. See? Kevlar, which is what most of flat belts today are made out of. So let's put this on. It says right there, Lawn Master 2. <laughs> like if you notice on these belts, you can see where the cord is, kind of up high. And then there's a cord that looks like down here. But this is corded throughout. If you cut this thing, this thing is woven with cord. Of course this, well, it's actually quite, this is pretty flexible. I've been told that you can't put it on as small of pulleys, but I had a bunch of you guys say that you're already using these for superchargers and stuff, so I think I'm just, I'm going to stick with this unless I could find something automotive. And this is pretty close. Alright, the belt is on. Fits pretty good. Fits down in them grooves pretty good. And I got it pretty tight. Pretty tight. We'll see how that one holds up. The other one did stretch, but I put quite a few miles on it. And then, look what I got. That's not what I'm supposed to be getting. Why'd that come in? Okay. Whew, scared me. I guess it's just a general box. Oh man, this comes with stickers. Ho, ho, ho. These guys should have sponsored me. Keep this behind the seat. I got a bunch of belts still behind the seat. Another fairly long gauge. It's got two needles that go from zero to 300. This must be Fahrenheit. Wow, those are big. Seriously? Why so big? My god. It's huge. I was hoping it was a smaller thing, but it is what it is. Got my tailpipe on. Got my new gauge, but it's not hooked up. Come on, motor rider, let me warm it up. Ooh, look at him hammer. Sitting 10 pounds? Oh man, you gotta be careful. You're running good. The next day. We're gonna hook up this dual intake air temperature gauge inlet and outlet of the supercharger. I mounted it here. I've had several people offer to make me something with their printers. But I'm going to see if I can find a flat piece of like half inch plastic that I could put. And if that doesn't look good, 
maybe I will. I mean, I'd put it here, but I don't think I have enough wire to get there now. That might be a problem. I did leave a little slack, but I mean, that's like 14 inches. That's what she said. So the connectors that go for the thermal readings, the sensors, I'm gonna see if I can twist these up, keep them a little neater. That's all she'll do, boys. That's good enough. Lightly in the vise. Jeez, I don't know how many more wires I can run through here, huh? Don't forget the power cable. It don't give you a whole lot. Yeah, see? That's from about here. I'll never make it. And they're all about the same length, so... I can't put the pods there now, unless I lengthen all the wires. I know it's not that big of a deal kind of do like the look of where it is. I even have harness loom. Oh yeah, I did, uh, I put that coupling, my pressure hose, welded up a piece to go in there because I only had a short nipple in there and it wasn't hardly grabbing. He said nipple. Just waiting for this 45 that's doing today. When I take it apart again, I can drill my one sensor in here and my other sensor I'm gonna put over here. That comes with nice band clamps. One time. And band clamp. I'm glad we put that belt dilemma to rest. I did get quite a few comments of people that have been using those belts. People have been using those Kevlar belts for years on like supercharged stuff. I might take a trip to Harbor Freight. They got a dolly on sale that I want to put that 350 Chevy motor on to roll around in my other garage. I also need to pick up a set of pipe taps because I don't have a three-eighths. I have an eighth inch and a quarter. A few more feet should do it. I'm not a lefty, boys, in any sense. <laughs> Might be a little more messy wind, but when your right hand gets tired, you got to switch to the left. Am I right? That should just about do it. See if we can get some more wires down through here. My Harbor Freight fiberglass pulling rods, or snaking rods, whatever you want to call them. I know, I got a lot of Harbor Freight stuff. Don't judge me. Actually, go ahead, judge me if you want, because I don't really care. At least I can get all these wires ready and run. Wire it all up so we can see what it looks like. I'm gonna need a bigger notch. There. But I think that'd look pretty cool if I can get a plastic that would go around this and then hump around that and back around. It's gonna be tight. Tight's good. Yes, I used wire nuts to connect these together because of this. I can keep adding stuff. And I know a lot of people are going to say you don't use wire nuts in a car. Well, as you can see, I just did. Judge me. Jeffro's got a cob shop. Cheesy can have a cob shop too. Orange wires that I am never going to use. Well, let's see if it works. It does. Change these to a that one. Well, that wire is going to be way short, huh? Geez, I need a time to go this, follow the harness over, which come on top of the motor. It looks like I'm still going to need five feet almost. Skimped out a little bit there, glow shift. If I knew that I was going to have to extend the wires, I would have ran something with multiple wires up there. I don't like having splices in the elements, you know? So the elbow came in, but it was basically like the same as that radiator elbow. So I decided just to weld this and use two straight pieces, which is probably better. I put my, I don't know if I'd be able to get in there. Got my temperature sensor in there. Got it all cleaned up inside, sprayed out. 
surprised how you get like a little bit of spatter on the inside. I had to knock them all off. You don't want that going in the motor, do you? Nope, not at all. So there's the finished product. Sensors are in. And we should be set. Isn't that pretty? I think so. A few moments later. Motor Rider 2018 is on his way over. We're going to take a ride. Go to Three Brothers for breakfast. And then stop at the auto parts store. And then stop at Tractor Supply. bowl was empty, I changed the main jet, so I had to let the bowl fill back up. I know it's always lean when I keep off the throttle a little bit. Like running lean with part throttle. I got drop. Yeah, it even stalled. I was like, what the hell? Every time you mess with something, I don't know if I'll ever get that carburetor right. Yesterday it was like rich. Huh. We got hardly any boost now. Something's wrong. I lost boost. Ha! <laughs> the belt frayed. You smell the belt? Good thing I brought another belt. Jeez. Chewed that right up. I tightened it up too, because I thought I was like, alright, that's the first stretch. I think it's this one. Chewed her up pretty good. And I wasn't even fing around either, so. Oddly enough, right here is where I threw the first belt. Definitely lean under full boots. A little too lean to cruise with. That main jet affects the whole band, apparently. Might have to live with that other one. That's a freaking bump. My 14.7 is perfect for a normal carburetor. Carburetor, didn't I? Or is it because it's so cold out? I mean, I got a hundred and what was it like 160 going into the carburetor, though. Man, remember what I said about Starbucks?
I'm gonna have to put that other jet back in, I guess. Huh. I turned it. I turned like all the way around. Yeah. Jeez. Later. Well, that was good as usual. I think I'm gonna skip tractor supply and everything because Minnie's running a little lean. I'll go home. Put that other jet in there. That supercharger is running hot right now, which is kind of hot too. That thing was up there. It's like 170 degrees. That's, I wonder if something's up with the supercharger. Well, I am being easier on it too. Maybe I tightened the belt up too much. So that main's got to stay the main that I had in there before. Should have left well enough alone, Minnie. I mean, there's only two things I did. Well, no, there's three things. I changed the belt, welded that 45 on the charge pipe, and I changed the main jet. Guess I should have done one thing at a time, eh? Spit up belts and chewed them out, Minnie. You're a belt-eating machine. I may have to put a separate pulley on for you. Put a cog set up, huh? Driven on that supercharger. It's just pulling too much horsepower. The mixtures are way better now. What the heck was making it act up last night? I don't know if a tensioner is going to fix it because it's just going to keep wearing the belt until it breaks, right? Got my 4L38 belt on now. Back to the drill jet because it ran best. So I'm going to Levine's, see what they can give me for an automotive belt because maybe you guys are right about these lawnmower belts. I'm one to admit when I'm wrong. So if they can hook me up and I put it on there and it lasts, we'll see. It definitely runs better with, the, with this main jet. All the mixtures are pretty close to perfect. Cruising's supposed to be 12 to 13. It's like right on. Can't believe that that supercharger would take that much power where it's going to keep blowing these belts. All I know is the original belt I bought didn't last a day. It's 4L lawnmower belts. I had that one on there from when I was racing Jeff Rowan before that. I mean the thing lasts like days and I bet you I put, I don't know, at least a tank, almost two tank fulls of gas on that one. That supercharger has to take some horsepower to make the horsepower. You know, I don't know what the conversion factor is. You guys know? This guy's riding my hiney hole. This jet combo right now runs the best of all. Oh, that, that gets pretty hot. That tube, huh? That was like 170 the last time I went. Compressed air. Creates friction. Uh oh. What the hell happened now? Something's up. Same exact spot. It's flipping the belt over. It flipped the belt over. Same exact spot. Something's up with this. My pulleys are all in line. I mean, you could see it. I think the supercharger's drawing too much. Like something's going on with the supercharger. I think maybe the supercharger seized up. I never did check the oil because it just. Boom, stops. Maybe the supercharger season up. Sure as hell don't feel like it though. Something's up with it though. I never was doing that before. <laughs> but I got the old one on me. 
Can't even make it to the damn parts store. That thing turned to rubber. Uh, see, that don't make any sense. Something's not right. Some Ting Wong. Is it possible that this thing is seasoned up? Yeah, see? I think the superchargers season up. What else would make that do that? Something seasoned up. It is getting hot, like I said. Am I overdriving that? It, I mean, I see two to one online. Thing was running so good, too. Like mint. But the supercharger was making noise. Oh, don't lose that. I think I did. Oh, man. Mixture. Jeez. I think the supercharger is seizing up. What else would make it do that burn like that? Let's see if we can get her back home. Where'd my damn chart go? Not even spinning it. Something's up with it. I don't know if I can even make it home. because it's slipping on the belt. Why do it work so good now it's not? What's the factor? I don't know how hot the discharge pipe's supposed to get. The only thing that can cause that is if the belt stopped and it spun on there. And that must be what's happening. That supercharger must be overheating. Well damn boys. I got it out. It's not binding at all. I do see that there's some scuffs there. I swear it's overheating. And season up. I don't remember how much oil, but I th it was definitely above that. So let me get something clean to put that in. Oh yeah, you can see the heat right there. Like I said from the beginning, I am no expert at all. Oh, it's under pressure. Or vacuum. Whew, smells like <laughs> gear oil. Mm -hmm. Oil looks good. I don't know, it looks fine to me. Hmm. I'll measure how much was in there. Who remembers how many cc's it was? The thing that gets me is it's the 
coolest day I've driven it. And really the only factor is I change a discharge pipe, which would have no effect on this. If anything, it's smoother flowing. And disconnected the blow-by tube. It's 100 cc's right there. I looked it up again. It's 100 milliliters, which is 100 cc's, which it exactly has. I screwed up in my other video. I forget what I said it was in cc's, but 100 milliliters is 100 cc's. And as you can see, I mean, there's air bubbles in it, but it's good. What the heck, man? Now what, guys? This is the intake side. See those little scuffs? See him? I'm telling you. Things heating up and expanding. But what the heck can you do about it? Hey, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Hit that bell if you want new notifications on new videos. Links for products used are in the description and on MotoCheese.com. Thanks for watching.